the next value generosity generosity this is um, appreciating with gifts the habit of appreciating the habit of appreciating your spouse with gifts is based on the value of being generous Matthew 2 and verse 11 says and when they had come into the house they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him and when they had opened their treasures they presented prayer requests they had petitions no the Bible says they presented gifts to him they presented gifts to him they presented gifts to him the number one relationship in your life is God if you present gifts to God, your number two relationship in your life is your spouse. Because remember, Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And who is the number one neighbor? Your spouse. Matthew 7 verse 11 says, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children. You know how to give good gifts to your children. So that means if you should give good gifts to your children, you should give better gifts to your spouse. Amen. Because your children are not as important to you as your spouse. You, you're familiar in, in the US, they have these, uh, um, the, what do you call them, tornadoes. So, or, or sometimes called cyclones. So, a, a Kansas, Kansas in the city, um, the, the state of Kansas, a Kansas cyclone hit a farmhouse. It's known for having tornadoes and cyclones. A Kansas cyclone hit a farmhouse just before dawn one morning. It lifted the roof off, picked up the beds on which the farmer and his wife slept, and set them, and set them down gently in the next county. The wife began to cry. Don't be scared, Mary. Her husband said, we are not hurt. Mary continued to cry. I'm not scared, she responded between sobs. I'm happy. Because this is the first time in 14 years we have been out together. <laughs> Give good gifts to your spouse. <laughs> If you can give good gifts to your children, give good gifts to your spouse. Go out. It should not be occasional. Amen. It should not take a cyclone. It should not take a cyclone or a tornado to go out. Be generous with compliments. The value of generosity, then you will not have the habit of criticizing be generous with compliments not criticisms be generous with compliments not criticisms so when you have the habit of criticizing is because you haven't recognized the value of generosity because you're generous with fault finding you're not generous with praise giving so when you realize that you need to be generous then you develop the habit of criticizing less and less and praising more and more. So you become a chronic praiser. You have a, a, the habit of, you, you have chronic compliments. As in, you are always complimenting your spouse, not complaining and whining about your spouse. Be a compliment giver, not a fault finder. The habits, developing the habits of successful marriages. Habits have strength when they are rooted in a value. Because you see from the word of God, we should be generous. Not just with God, generous with people, and above all, with your children, and above all, with your spouse. Being generous. And where, it concern, where our words are concerned, where you're generous with compliments. To compliment is, to, is, is, is speaking kind words. Is praising. One attribute that contributes, one, one quality that contributes to, to successful prayer is not fault finding. 
Isaiah 58, there is the chapter known for fasting. In verse 9, first God begins by saying, um, uh, fasting does not really involve, I'm not looking for hungry people. I'm not looking for people who are on hunger strike. That's not what I consider fasting. He goes on to describe what he considers proper fasting. And then in verse 9, he says, Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer you. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst. Which yoke? The pointing of the finger. The pointing of the finger criticizing the habit of criticizing so god is saying you're criticizing you shower me with praises let's sing in the spirit hallelujah <laughs> you you shower god almighty with praises and love and affection but you're criticizing your spouse you fault finding you have the habit of worshiping god but the habit of criticizing your spouse that's a bad that's not a habit that will lead to a successful marriage it's a yoke where you're whining, whining all the time. Whining, whining. In fact, if you stop whining, your spouse wonders whether you're okay. You know, because that's your default setting. As in, <laughs> you, you criticize, you complain, you mama, you're gr- grumbling. It's, it's, that's it. So, God is saying, when you take away that yoke, and then they think, which yoke? Huh? Kamote. Is it Kamote? Wait. No, no, is it? no, no, not Kamote. It's the pointing of the finger. You keep on accusing and accusing and accusing. It says, your prayers cannot be successful. Be reasonable when you realize this. You be, you be reasonable and considerate with your spouse's weaknesses. And you are deliberately more aware of your weaknesses than your spouse's weaknesses. Let me tell you, that there when you habitually are more, you are more um, aware of your weaknesses more than your spouse's weaknesses, that's one good habit that will lead to a successful marriage. Matthew 7, and there is scripture to back it up. Judge not, and you will not be judged. For with what judgment you judge, you'll be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your spouse's eye? He says brother's eye, but you can interchange that. And do not consider the plank in your own eye. So Jesus was saying the right perspective in life, and I would say also in marriage, is that my spouse has specks. I have the planks. I have the planks. My spouse has specks. And so... I really need to work on the planks because Jesus said, why can't you work on your plank and then you'll be able to see clearly so that you can remove the specks in your brother or in your spouse. Let's go to the next slide. People are quick to judge but slow to correct themselves. They're quick to judge. They're quick to see what your spouse has done wrong but where they are concerned Grace and mercy. <laughs> Grace and mercy. The Lord is working on me. Yeah, the Lord is perfecting what concerns me. But, <laughs> sorry? Nobody's perfect. We are human. Nobody's perfect. We are human. 